Well, hello everyone. Time for a tie beam. So we got the tie beam in here. And let me tell you, wrestling that thing in here is like wrestling a grizzly bear. That's a big beam. But I kind of wanted to go over how this thing looks and show you a couple of the dilemmas that I have with this thing and what I'm probably going to do. So, right here, you can see that knot. And that knot is in the exact wrong spot, right on the end. And you can see by the tape measure that I'm right at 16 feet. So this beam has to be 16 feet long from basically the end of each tenon. And that knot is not in the right spot. What I'm kind of hoping is is that this knot is kind of on this side of the beam and so if I measure in from this side and actually do my two inches two inches and cut my tenon here that I may be able to cut most of that thing out but I guess I don't know for sure so I really don't want that on the bottom third of the beam especially in that spot Got a pretty good sized knot right there, but there's no grain run out around that knot. The grain is falling around the knot pretty good. And then I have this little guy where I do have some grain run out and a knot right on the bottom. So if I put that knot up there on the top, this one's gonna be on the bottom, but it's pretty small. So I'm kind of thinking, relatively speaking, that I don't think that should be that big of a deal. Okay, so we're dealing with this knot like we talked about before, and here it is. And so, what I found out is, is that this is my reference face and this is my adjacent face. I would have preferred to have the adjacent face over here, but it just didn't work out that way. So, as I look at this, it looks like if I cheat this all the way to the very end, you know, remember my tenon is seven inches, I've got a one inch housing on the post for this for this tie beam to fit into and so if I cheat this all the way to seven inches on my framing tape my timber frame is tape I can eliminate this knot from at least the tenon portion the knot's still going to be here which isn't ideal but at least it's on the top and at least I can eliminate it from the tenon and if I look at this timber it dives out towards the bottom down here. And so I can cheat it all the way to the almost the very end. And you know my tent is not going to dive in. So I probably won't even worry about squaring, making a square cut on this beam and actually squaring this end off. I'll probably just make my marks here and then make the shoulder cuts and actually remove the material for the tenon and then set the square on top of the tenon and actually just square the tenon up and hopefully I can take this knot out of the equation at least for the most part you know this being my first timber frame I guess I'm learning how to read the timber um, how to look for trouble spots um, knots that might give you some trouble grain run out around the knots those sorts of things I am putting a loft in this barn so these beams do have to support more than their own weight or more than the building roof load. And so that's kind of why I'm being a little cautious about how I orientate this beam in the structure so it can be the strongest that it can be. And where I position the beam in the structure for the same reason.
stay out here and keep Will on this beam in the rain here. Thanks for kind of going through the problems I have with this beam. I thought it might be kind of interesting to kind of see, you know, how I read this timber and how I kind of had to work around the features of the timber and make it work and make it fit in the place that I needed it to go in the barn. Sometimes it doesn't always go as planned, but usually you can figure out a way to work it out. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.